I'm Jonathan Wilson, the founder of OpSafe International. And today I'm in the Philippines at the Nazarene Asia Pacific Theological Seminary. Uh, here with the Korean Christian Network. And I'm here to talk about trauma in children and especially in relationship to the conflict that recently happened in Mindanao. Let me share first a little bit about our work with OpSafe International. We've been active in over seven countries, helping over 20,000 children recover and gain resiliency from post-traumatic stress. We found that after a stressful incident, such as a disaster, a typhoon, uh, earthquake, tsunami, also things like conflict, where people are displaced from their homes and have to live in evacuation centers, that children need more than just food, shelter, and medicine. As a parent of two children, if my kids were outside playing and suddenly they fell down and skinned their knee, they would come inside the house and cry, oh, mommy, daddy. And they'd ask me, daddy, help me. And of course, first thing I do is disinfect the wound and put a band-aid on. That, that's very basic first aid. But my job isn't done yet. I've got to take it a step further as a parent and put my arms around my child and hold them until they finish crying. And you know how kids are. <laughs> <laughs> and they need that love, that compassion, that support. They need to know that mommy or daddy is there and they are not alone. So this is our first role as compassionate caregivers responding to children after a disaster or a crisis. We need to provide food and shelter and medicine and these kinds of basic supports. But we have a job further than that. We're there to give them both help and hope. What kinds of trauma do children experience? Well, there's the everyday kinds of trauma. Uh, I fell down and skinned my knee. My friend uh, took my toy. <laughs> you have uh, all kinds of things that children experience through their lives. And, and most of these, they will recover from quite well. They will cry for a little bit. They will be comforted, given some wisdom and some direction by their parents, their teachers, their caregivers. And they go through the traumas of life just fine. In fact, they'll end up growing because of the experience and becoming a better person. However, with extreme trauma, many times children can be overwhelmed. And not just children, but their caregivers. Their parents are also experiencing trauma. Their teachers have lost homes or lost family members. And so the natural support system that is around children is broken down. We also find that children, because they're vulnerable, they don't have the ability to fight for themselves or advocate for themselves, are oftentimes preyed upon by people who want to take advantage of them, to exploit them. And so we find that children suffer abuse other than just natural disasters, uh, abuse such as sexual abuse, physical abuse, exploitation. And so we want to be aware of the various kinds of trauma that children face and bring them true help and hope in the midst of that trauma. Now, we've learned a lot about post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder, but most of the research has been done in regards to adults. Now, adults 
have been through uh, military experiences where they've uh, had bombings and have seen terrible things. They come back and, uh, and we noticed that they had a difficulty transitioning back into normal life. And, and this became called PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and so most of the research has been done in regards to adults and, and especially regarding the military or uh, emergency personnel such as police or fire. Um, however, children are, are not just little adults. It's uh, a very different thing to minister and help children than to work with uh, an adult who can understand what you're saying more comprehensively and who has greater power to control their own life. With a child, we have to think, how can we enter their world and help them and bring hope to them in a way that is accessible to children? We've discovered that the best way to bring help and hope to children who've been through trauma is emotional first aid, or uh, technically it's referred to as psychological first aid. Now, what is psychological first aid? If you were in an accident and uh, you were hurt, someone on the scene would perhaps come to your aid. They would come in and stop the bleeding, dress the wound, wrap a bandage around it, help you with a blanket, and call for the professionals to come and rescue you. Now this person might not be a doctor. He might not be a nurse or have any formal training in medicine. And yet because they understand basic first aid, they're able to save a life. Now this program of first aid or life-saving training has been conducted by the Red Cross for hundreds of thousands of people who have no medical training and yet are able to stand in the gap at that crucial moment and save a life. So why can't we do the same thing for the internal trauma that children face? Why can't we do the same thing for those wounds that you cannot see? And so we have developed a program to teach emotional or psychological first aid to people who are not psychologists. They're not social workers. They're not professionals in the mental health arena. And this is very, very important because Many places around the world where we have brought our program are severely deficient in the number of professional mental health workers to the need of children in that area. In the Philippines, more than one million children are exposed to natural disasters every year. One million. And yet, how many child psychologists are prepared to go and minister to these children? The reality is that there is less than one child psychologist or social worker for 10,000 children. How can one professional mental health practitioner minister to 10,000 children? Well, it's simple, they can't. So we want to prepare non-professionals to stand in the gap, to provide the care that is needed so that the professionals can work with the children who absolutely need professional care. What we've found is that there is a ready group of people who are already skilled at the basic necessary tasks for emotional first aid with children. 
You see, in our churches, we work with children every week. We have Sunday schools, and we have volunteers who are trained to work with children. And so this becomes an incredible resource for communities that are in the midst of disaster. In the disaster, many things in our community are overwhelmed. We find that schools and hospitals have been flooded by typhoons. We find that uh, government institutions have been attacked. Many of the normal places that we go to find help are no longer functioning. And yet, every community has resources. And those resources don't have to come from the outside. They don't have to be brought in from a faraway country or from the capital city. In fact, the resources are right there within the, their own community. And the church is a powerful resource. And oftentimes, it's overlooked. The church is not only a singular place, but it is a network, or as we say in Christian circles, the body of Christ. So every church is, is not just standing alone, but we're part of a larger family. And so we go into places where disasters have happened, and we train local Christians to be able to do psychological first aid, to care for the children in their community, and to be able to bring help and hope to those children. Now, trauma can be devastating. And we know that the effects of trauma are long-lasting. We know that children who've been exposed to trauma at a young age are at risk later on in life for using drugs, early pregnancy, being recruited by antisocial groups, even mental illness and physical illness stem from early childhood trauma. So when a disaster hits a community, it is like a ticking time bomb. In 10 years, the children who are now the youth of that community will be exposed and at risk for a whole slew of problems. But at the same time, trauma can also lead to growth. And we've all heard stories of people who have a very difficult childhood, who have overcome the disadvantages. They've overcome the problems that they were exposed to. And they've made good. They've done well. What's the difference? How come one child ends up in a gang on drugs in jail and another child ends up being successful and overcoming their problems? We found that the main reason is the support around that child. If a child has a mother, a father, a grandparent, a teacher, a church that will come around them and guide them through the difficulties of life, if they know I am not alone, God has a purpose and a plan for my life. There's hope for the future. There's help available. And most importantly, I'm loved. If they know these things, then their chances of overcoming are significantly improved. We've seen here in the Philippines that communities suffer from generational crisis. That generation after generation, they face poverty and exploitation and drug abuse, violence. The way to break that chain is by caring for our children. As the church, 
We have the ability to do this. We have the capacity. And what we've done with Operation Safe is to develop a tool to help churches reach the children in their community. Let me share a little bit from the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 9, it says, Many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now, you know the story. Lazarus had died. And Mary and Martha were mourning their brother, their, their neighbors, the Jewish rabbis and leaders had come around them to comfort them. Now, the word here to comfort is in Greek, para mytheomai. Para mytheomai. And this is a very interesting word because the root para means to come alongside. And this is wonderful to come alongside. When someone is hurting, when they've experienced a very stressful situation, we come alongside of them. You don't even have to say anything. You just let them know, I'm here with you, brother. I'm here with you, sister. But then the next part of the word para mytheomai is the word myth. And, and from that we get the word in English mythology. Mythology, as you know, are meaningful stories. They're, they're good stories, but they're not necessarily true. So they're good sounding words that don't actually have to be correct. And this is a very telling, insightful understanding of comfort given by the religious people. It was a coming alongside of them to tell them nice sounding words that weren't necessarily true. And so they said, oh, there, there, it's okay. It'll be all right. You'll be fine. It's not that bad. And meanwhile, the person who is being comforted says, but, but it's not all right. It's not okay. It is bad. I'm not going to get over this. And, and an anger starts to come up in their hearts and they, they say, you know, hey, this isn't right. So often as religious people, we comfort others in this way. We say nice things, but it isn't true. Now, in John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus told his disciples he was going away, but that, that he would send a, another comforter. This another comforter would abide with you and teach you and lead you into all truth. Now, this other comforter in Greek is the word parakletos. Parakletos. And you know, the para is the same word, coming alongside. But the kletos is a different word. It means to help, to help, to come alongside, to help. And of course, this is another name that Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit. True comfort is not speaking nice words that sound good but aren't true. True comfort is 
coming alongside people to help them in their distress. And sometimes we don't have to say anything. Sometimes the best thing we can do is just be there. But as we work with children, we want to give them the truth, the truth that's in the Bible, that they are not alone. And it's true. They're not the only ones who've experienced this trauma. They have other children with them who've been through the same thing. They have adults from their own community who have gone through this together with them and can provide for them strength. We teach them everyone is important. Little children often think that their story is not important, that no one wants to listen to them. And yet we teach them, no, even the smallest is important. And we learn this from the Word of God. We teach them that there is hope for the future, to be strong and courageous to ask for help, and that they are loved. True comfort is to come alongside to help. And this is the role of the church. This is what we should be doing. So when there's a crisis in our midst, as happened here lately in Mindanao, the church should rise up. What can we do, you say? We're very small. Well, we can come alongside the smallest among us, the children, and we can be the help that they need. If they receive help in this crucial time, their lives will change. Instead of being disabled by post-traumatic stress, they will end up growing and becoming stronger. Our vision, our goal, our desire is that every child in the world can receive emotional care after trauma. We've been working with children after tsunamis, earthquakes, typhoons, conflicts, and yet there are many, many more children in our world who need someone to come alongside them to help. There's children in our streets. There are children who have lost parents. There are children who are refugees, moved out of the place where they used to call home. Even in our churches, there are children whose parents have divorced or who have been abused. Our vision is that the church would become that place where they can truly find help and hope. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Jonathan Wilson, the founder of OpSafe International.